Good evening, everyone. Happy Thursday. Welcome to a Thursday night review. And I'm Judge James, by myself as I was last week, to do a, a review of a game product. We thought that especially right now during the quarantine and self-isolation and all that stuff going on, it was never a better time to jump out there and to talk about gaming products that we love, or I love, I guess. As you can see, there's no Judge Evie with me tonight. Again, uh, not the biggest fan of book reports, so we uh, figured this would be something I do every week, and at least through the summer until either folks get bored with it or uh, you know I get I run out of time to do it or work gets busy again who knows not that work isn't busy I'm working now more than I've ever worked before I just do a lot of it from home and then when I go out and about it's I'm like you know masked up gloved up you know trying to be safe social distance all that stuff so all right so Greg Greg's on what's up and uh, up down Devin is on hello Devin I, uh, I gotta say, before I go into tonight's review, I, I read a very happy email and a very sad email in one. I read uh, on the happy side, so I, on Monday, kind of declared my, uh, I went ahead and backed Deadlands, the Weird West, finally, and I'm in, I think, at the $125 level right now, because I don't need the punch-out figures, because I, I have... A, a lot of Reaper miniatures and, and Hero Forge miniatures for Westerns, as well as a lot of Savage Worlds miniatures, which I think are also Reaper. Pewter and and the plastics. But I'm in there, uh, and I don't really need the, the metal dice, I don't need a, a dice tray. As you can all see, I've got my whiskey box. So I've, I've backed a lot of the Savage Worlds, Deadland stuff especially, pretty strong already. Didn't feel the need to go too far on that, but I could change my mind. But I saw, you know, before jumping on that I think there have been like 17, let's see, what is the count? 17 stretch goals crushed. So congrats to Pinnacle Entertainment Group on that one. And then the sad news I just saw was the Gen Con uh, event registration delayed, which I'm not surprised to see. As we've said on a previous show, I <coughs> uh, expect to see Gen Con delayed and probably, probably canceled at this point. I don't know. Just my personal thoughts even if it's not canceled who who's going to want to go with everything going on in the world right now with that many people together there's con crud and there's con covid and that's a tough one so but it's been a, been a good day good evening and uh it's been doing some reading tonight so i i'm preparing for weekend games i'm running forbidden fruits on saturday morning for shadow of the demon lord and then saturday afternoon our Lankmar group is starting Cheating Death, and I just finished reading this finally for the first time. This is a uh, level one adventure by Tim Callahan. Really good adventure, really good module. So I highly recommend this one, and maybe I'll talk about it after I run it. But if you're looking for a good um, DCC uh, Lankmar module, I did the Lankmar review last week. This is a, 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 a nice one to, to grab if you don't have it already. So anyway. Maybe a future review. Devin said, oh, Greg's saying I will likely bail on Gen Con. And Devin says it's the mixing that's the problem. Yeah, you know, you figure you've got so many people together, touching dice, close proximity, going through that, that dealer hall. I mean, I really hope that by the fall, there's at least some way to go to small cons. I would be very sad to see, to not do Save Against Fear this year. And I was talking to my wife, Jennifer, earlier today how I, the con I really want to get back to is Gary Con. I, I love the feel of Gary Con. I do mess with my friend Mark Plord a lot about how PAX Unplugged could be as good as Gary Con. But uh, it would be really hard to, to top Gary Con. That really is an amazing convention. So on to the review, okay? So tonight's review is for the Dungeon Crawl Classics Sunken City Adventure Omnibus and Guide, or just the Sunken City Omnibus. This is uh, by Purple Sorcerer Games, which means John Marr. And if you know the Purple Sorcerer and this logo, and you're a DCC fan, well, why is that? Well, purplesorcerer.com is where pretty much every DCC fan gets their character sheets that are, or, or their pre, not pre-gens, but they, their um, 
there's zero level pregens. There, there's the character builder on there where you hit a button and woof, it throws out a bunch of uh, zero level characters for you. So if you didn't know, they make awesome adventures as well. And I believe these were the first. These are the collection of the four first ones that they put out. Since that time, they've had Nevin Pendlebrook's Perilous Pantry, uh, Frost Fang Expedition, uh, several more. Uh, I'm, 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 uh, I'm looking at the covers in my, eye, my mind's eye, and I can't remember. Uh, they also uh, put out Carnival of the Damned, which is David Beatty's adventure published through Purple Sorcerer Games. And uh, so I, I've been very excited to, run, to, to review this one, especially since I've run every module out of this uh, omnibus. Uh, the first one, the first module that's in there, uh, Perils of the Second City, I've run twice. Maybe, maybe three times. And you know, the, the key point in doing these reviews isn't just, oh, I read a product, and it reads cool, it's, it's, it's something you should grab. I wanna make it be something that I own, that I've read, that I've run, GM'd, or have played. You know, I wouldn't mind being a player in Bride of the Black Man, or not a player, a review of, of Bride of the Black Mans. I've played in that as a player. Uh, and I want, I want this to be something where I'm open to some suggestions as well. So. Uh, as always, uh, as we do this experience, if you have something you want to see me review, if you can peek behind me, behind me here, I still get thrown off by how OBS doesn't show a mirror of me. If uh, I peek behind myself here and you see anything back to open review, you can you can toss something out. These will be pretty DCC centric, for one big reason being that Dungeon Crawl Classics, at least since 2016 has been the system I've run the most of any system. Uh, I, it's really getting up there. Up to that point from 2014 or 2013 to 2016, it was a, it was a lot of Numenera and the Strange and Cypher system and a lot of Savage Worlds. And while I run all of those still, DCC really has a special place in my heart, as I've said so many times on this channel. But it was the Sunken City Omnibus that changed my interaction with Dungeon Crawl Classics. So in January 2016, I was on the hunt to do a long-term Dungeon Crawl Classics campaign. Up to that point, I had run one-shots and short mini campaigns, but nothing at higher level. When I ran my first campaign with DCC was, if, if I remember correctly, besides just doing a few adventures with family and friends, um, my first campaigns for DCC were either with uh, with some friends uh, in a live person, a Viking Crawl Classics group, in which case I ran a old Dungeon Magazine adventure called Isle of the Abbey for basic D&D. And I just did a quick conversion on the fly, great adventure, like four or five sessions, had a really fun time with that. But we didn't continue it. After that, or before that, I'm trying to remember when this happened. At some point around there, it might have been before that, I ran DCC, it was before. I ran DCC as something I called Quattro Con Carnage. You, if you listen to Glober, and you've heard me talk about it before, but Quattro Con Carnage was a, an experiment where I ran the same characters over eight sessions through four systems, starting with basic fantasy RPG, then we changed the characters and revamped them for DCC. Then we changed them for Savage Worlds and we changed them for Cypher System. At the time, I don't believe there was a Cypher System core book out, so we did it for Numenera and the Strange and we just kind of figured out how to run Cypher System without uh, a, a, a Cypher core book. So I had those two games of DCC. So fast forward to, to January 2016, I wanted to run a DCC campaign. And I had this backlog of adventures I wanted to run. I had bought this core book or this omnibus at Gen Con 2015. And I, I, I believe, pretty sure, pretty sure that's where I got this. I know I got the PDF later, I think. And this is the, uh, this is the standard soft cover, standard edition uh, from, uh, so it's not the, the super, uh, what's it called, high gloss or, or higher quality page um, print. But it's, and, and yes, Greg, it is fairly thin. I'll get into the details of it in a second here. 
but it's four modules in here and this this twenty dollar that's what it retails for this was like twenty bucks this twenty dollar pack of four adventures fifteen it was it was a year and a half of monthly campaign we ran fifteen adventures essentially from this so figure thirty no probably forty five hours of gameplay for twenty bucks that's a pretty good value I think it is uh, you know and it set the stage for a much longer campaign. So what about this kind of hooked me when I, when I was reading through it? The first thing was the art style. And again, I, I'm not the best at showing, uh, when I wanna show something, I'm gonna do this, you know? Hey, Hector's on, what's up? I'm gonna show stuff like this because I don't have any kind of ability or, or quality ability to, to, to screen share crap because I'm low tech. You know, the maps, uh, the pictures, the images that are in here, the, the art style, uh, it's f just fun. You know, I was reading through this, it was fun, it was colorful, uh, you know, the NPCs look kind of wacky and gonzo. There we go. Uh, I read through it and I'm looking at this and everything was so quirky. And uh, so John Marr is, who's the purple sorcerer, he wrote it, he edited it, he did the, he did the art, a lot of the art for it. And looking through this, I was like, this is, this is reminding me of, at the time it reminded me a lot of, uh, of some of the art that you would see in, I don't know, eight and 16 bit video games. You know, I'm looking at it and thinking, this reminds me of RPGs that I would have played as a kid on my Nintendo or a friend's Super Nintendo or whatever. It, it just seemed real colorful and I love the color of it. And it was a different feel from that that visceral throwback art that you see on the covers of a lot of the other DCC works, you know, um, especially the stuff that's been done by Doug Kovacs or Stefan Pogue or whatnot. Uh, and it just, I, I thought it was, it looked, it looked fun. The event, the four adventures in here seemed solid. So we went with it. We did a monthly event and I was having a hard time really kind of cementing players for this. I thought at least it turned out it was never a problem. But what I did was I said I would have a rotating seat. So I invited uh, the first five people who wanted in the campaign could jump in. And whoever sat out for a month, we'd bring someone in to sit in. I think we had nine or ten people total come through. But we eventually settled on about six people that uh, that would were there for, for every event. You know, my friend uh, Andy, uh, Mark, uh, my friend Craig was in it, my friend Alex was in it. Um, I'm missing, I'm missing someone here. Uh, my friend, uh, Jonathan was in it and, uh, my friend Paul was in it. Jonathan, uh, is, is a friend from Brazil. That was kind of cool. Just knew him online. Uh, and he jumped into our game. So it was, it was a multi, a, a, a multicultural, multinational, uh, very diverse group of players in the campaign. And in the end, it was 18, 18 months. And then we run uh, Purple Planet, uh, Parallel the Purple Planet for 18 months afterwards from there. And I allowed character trees, kind of like how they did in Dark Sun, where players could have multiple characters. And we went, that campaign went from zero level to fifth level, ultimately. And um, I gotta say, you know, I discovered DCC in the Portal Under the Stars and with Sailors on a Starless Sea, but I truly unlocked the beauty of long-term DCC play within the sunken city. So much is said about DCC in the funnel. The, the coolest things that happen with Dungeon Crawl Classics happen higher than zero level. So, uh, and this this got me there. I, I, I've, this cemented for me my desire to run more DCC campaigns, and I'm glad that I do. Uh, at a glance, this is a 96 page book. Uh, there is another 84 pages in printable online material through a PDF. You can jump online and get the PDF with the book. It comes alongside it, so you can do um, uh, what is it? You can you can you can get the PDF right now, and the book will be delivered through Drive Through RPG. And uh, in that PDF, there's you know a new character class called Possum Men, a new patron, the Malak, the Dark Creeper. There are printable maps. There are printable miniatures as well. So there's a lot of resources for you to pull from. Devin's asking about character trees. That's where you have multiple characters um, and you can switch off between adventures. 
back in AD and D Second Edition Dark Sun, that was how you you didn't just have one character; you had four characters in a character tree, and every adventure you'd pick who came out, and you could get any two at any time could gain experience points in D and D Dark Sun. The idea of it was a more deadly campaign. So that if you lost someone, you had three more characters to pull from. We never had players with four character trees in Dark Sun. We had some with two and three. Uh, but I thought it'd be interesting for this campaign as well. Because some players would want to flip around and change who they, they had adventure adventure. You know, maybe Andy uh, would want to have his cleric for this game. Or maybe they need more fighting abilities. So maybe he would bring in his paladin for the next game. Something like that. We did the same thing for this campaign. Uh, as you go through this book, you have crazy NBC NPCs, legendary moments, very quirky magical items. The magical items are a hoot in here because all of them, uh, there's a bunch of them in the back of the book. Um, and, you know, the fez of binding, the comfy blanket, this small woolen blanket remains, remains touchably soft and comfortable. And after each week of regular use, the bear must succeed on a DC six will save or find themselves unwilling to part with it. Um, oh, it does heal twice the normal amount if you're using it to sleep with. Um, oh, it's just it's just fun and funny, and nothing in here is too too serious. Let's see here. Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, Tavakas, hey James, this is John, loaded up Twitch to say hi. What's up, sir, and thanks. It's a continuing, it's a continuing thrill to uh, how much you enjoyed the setting and made it your own. Hey John, that's awesome that he jumped on here. That's really cool. Um, I'm gonna guess that's John Marr. So, there we go. Now, oh man, no pressure there to talk about this, you know? Uh, but yeah, and, and that's a good point about him saying made it my own, because I did. That This is, it's 96 pages. And uh, someone said earlier that it looked kind of thin. There's a lot in there that you can work with. And I'm going to talk through that because there's four adventures. And this is going to be a longer review because I'm going to go through each of the adventures. Uh, and just say what I liked, what I did with them, how I played with them, and how you can use them in your game. Because that's really what this is all about. How can you use these products I'm talking about in your games? So... Uh, where is the Sunken City? And I mentioned this last week when I was discussing the Lankmar box set. The Sunken City is anywhere you want it to be. It discusses being near a place called the Great City. Now in our campaign, we just called it the Great City. We didn't call it anything special. It was just the Great City. But you could attach it to any other city, whether it's Punjar or Lankmar, or you want to attach it to... You could attach it to Sigil from Planescape and have the characters teleport there and make these like different planes... Uh, or something uh, doesn't really matter as long as you can have a swampy sunken area nearby or at least an ability to get to a swamp, sunken area and there are four adventures in this book you have perils of the sunken city the ooze pits of jonas grok a gathering of the marked and lair of the mist men now the first three are listed as zero level funnels and lair of the mist men is a first level uh, adventure I did things a bit different. I ran, uh, since again, 15 adventures with this, that'd be a lot of funneling. I did some minor modifications of the adventures very easily uh, to, to make uh, Paris the Sunken City, the, the funnel it was supposed to be, and then, and then halfway through they leveled up. And then Ooze Pits took them to, I believe, second level. It was a lot of adventuring in Ooze Pits. Uh, gathering them marked, we let them bring in new characters. They created uh, their their their... their character tree characters through uh, that adventure and then layer the mist men we had graded up to a second level adventure at the end of this we got to third level there was a little bit of uh of quick movement on some of the characters if some of the character died i'd let them bring another character in at a higher level uh where everyone else was just so you don't have a first level character running around with a bunch of third level characters because that can suck so we're going to go through each adventure so flipping through here we start with perils of the sunken city the first adventure here and this is the zero level funnel we got through this in two sessions it starts out with you getting to the sunken city and getting to this arena area you're outside an arena and then you have this really entertaining arena scene that leads into an interesting but rather short dungeon and you know while a long dungeon crawl is a great experience for players 
when you're talking about a zero level funnel or discussing a game that's for a convention or a one shot or a short campaign or a short mini campaign, you don't want a dungeon that is excessively long and going to take a lot of sessions to get through. Uh, you may not have the time for that. So for that reason, and for the fact that this adventure was the first time in my gaming career that I encountered a giant killer catfish, as, as a GM, that was a joy to run. Uh, this is the perfect adventure for a convention. You could fit this into three to four hours. If uh, there's a Cyclops Con 2 and you're looking for an adventure to run, uh, that's a great one to go with. And it does give you some, uh, I, I have to say here, uh, uh, the maps, you know, this is just a map to get to these sending stones that take you to the sunken city. You start in the great city and you walk your way to the swamp. Um, I threw some things in this adventure that would be super memorable. So for instance, there's, an, there's a lady's hovel that is a uh, kindly yet mysterious uh, Cirrus. And I made that Cirrus, she gave the characters a magical item that they would keep through the entirety camp of the campaign. Uh, it was a, it was a, we called it the Stick of Smite. And it caused like additional damage to anyone whose name started with the letter R. So one of the characters would take that as their weapon and they passed it around. And I remember one time in one scene, they have this, this just looks like a stick. Um, and they swung it at someone and they screamed, die Rodney, hoping Rodney was the enemy's name. Uh, I don't think I ever had them attack someone with an R as a name, but die Rodney ended up being the character's, um, it ended up being the, the their uh, their 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 motto for that group. Uh, if you if you look up my 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 blog livingforcrits.com, the last entry because I don't blog anymore. My last entry was the last adventure uh, wrap up. I used to do adventure recaps for my purple uh, my my uh, Sunken City Omnibus slash purple purple uh, purple planet campaign, and you can go back and read how we. I took on the adventures. Um, but Die Rodney, that's why we'd say Die Rodney. And I say Die Rodney uh, when I'm around those guys and we talk about the campaign. So, anywho. Uh, but this was the first adventure that I ran out of the series. And it was two sessions, had a great time. And we moved right into Ooze Pits of Jonas Grok. I gotta say, I do have a preference in this module. I love all four adventures. Ooze Pits of Jonas Grok is my favorite. And uh, it's a zero level funnel that I ran as a first level adventure. And it takes place in a village, or it starts out in a village called Slither's End. And Slither's End is such a fun, bizarre, and uh, eerie little town. Here's Slither's End. And it made for the absolutely perfect uh, you know, base of operations for the characters. And this would be their base for all 15 adventures in the module. And uh, after, well, I'm sorry, not the first two, obviously, because Slither's End appears in, in Ooze Pits. But you've got this really cool little town, and then you've got this region called the Slither's and Environs that also became an open, it doesn't lose a lot there, but believe me, I got to fill this in with more stuff. So, you know, uh, John made the comment of, uh, this uh, of making it my own slithers and this area where there's blank space i put things there so for seven sessions this adventure held my parties uh my players uh, uh attention whether it was you know in you know being going through and doing politics in slithers end or if it was there's a, a keep that there there's these uh brigands that have, have control they went and took the brigands out and ran the keep for a while it was like i got the castle builders guide out for 80 and the uh second edition and we were messing around with that a bit to figure out pricing to upgrade the castle or they found their way to this giant enormous tree or finally when they they finished off the adventure this was just such a fun open world adventure Running Slither's End, or I'm sorry, running Ooze Pits of Jonas Grok kind of put the bug in my in my brain to want to eventually go back and uh, afterwards go and do Purple Planet. Because I'd run some zero level stuff in the Purple Planet, but I really wanted to do a larger open world hex crawl after running this. Uh, 
So you, 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 when you're playing in this in this game, the, the you could do the plot more linear. You could put the breadcrumbs in front of the characters to figure out what's going on. But this is an adventure to be relished. It could be an easy mini campaign. You could start at zero level and run it to you know mid first level to second level. There are so many fun NPCs to deal with. Uh, I would not recommend this for convention play. I don't think I've ever seen it on a convention uh, listing, but there's just too much here in this adventure that you would definitely be rushed. Just exploring the town and all the characters there is going to take you a session. So Ooze Pits, special place in my heart, seven sessions in Ooze Pits of Jonas Grok. The uh, third adventure in this book is A Gathering of the Mark, a fun uh, zero level funnel that I ran as first, uh, I'm sorry, I ran as a zero level funnel. We at that time had the their characters, I think we were getting close to second or at second, and there was some death, so we wanted to replenish the characters within their character tree, so we ran this as a funnel, uh, but it was three sessions I ran it for, and after the first session, there were leveled characters at that point. So they, they moved on to first level and second level at that point. I think I let them go right to second. Uh, this is, has a much more of a horror feel, at least I felt that it did in the first two adventures, but as much of a horror feel as you can have with something where you're in a village with a, a puppet named Commodore Teak that interacts with you, controlled by an old guy named Gus, um, I don't want to say it breaks the horror elements, but it, it just, there's a creepiness to this adventure uh, throughout it. You have three parts. The adventure starts in a village, which is pretty short, uh, moves on to this manor, and then ends in an area called the Grove. The manor is huge. Uh, let me get the map of the manor here for you. It's huge, and it can be, it can be yours. Uh, I say that because... The manor area, let me get it here, and I can't find it because I'm an idiot. Ah, oh, where's the manor map? Why can't I find the manor map? Okay, hold on a second. I'm sorry. Here's the manor map. So, Blackwater Manor, okay? You've got a very populated first floor. Second floor is deserted. But does it have to be? You can put things on the second floor. You can put more monsters, you can put more treasure, you can put traps. So you could have the characters just find a deserted floor or you could fill this adventure out. I think it's one of the brilliant things that John did with these modules is he left a lot of room in here uh, for you to insert your own material. Um, and you know, one thing that I inserted, because I like to go to the bazaar, is in this, in this adventure, um, there is a bizarre little trophy being kept by Beauregard the Swamp Ogre. And uh, as John Marr wrote, adventurers would find some cakes, assorted snacks, a few pieces of gold, and, quote, a small silver statue of a pig raised up on its hind legs holding a bastard sword. A copper plate affixed to the base of the statue says, Lil Hammy shows him how. It's worth 25 gold pieces if the correct sort of tacky art collector can be found. Well, in our game and in our campaign, uh, I don't remember how this happened, but we let Lil Hammy gain sentience and and uh, awareness. And my friend Andy Lyon, he he made him one of his characters on his tree, and he turned him into a paladin from Crawl. And Lil Hammy was this little tiny pig paladin that that ended up getting to like, you know, he, he ended up on the purple planet, you know, and uh, just a legendary character eventually got to be full uh, man size at some point. And uh, he was, he was really fun. And it wasn't something that and the adventure does not say make a tiny pig paladin, but the adventure gives you all these cool little ideas. The whole book does of things to kind of latch on to. So if you're a creative judge and you like to add things here and there, this is a way to do it. And I, I think DCC allows you to kind of, I don't know, go off the rails a bit and the feel is still fun. Having this little pig paladin running around, especially uh, uh, in the second, in the follow-up adventure, which was uh, um, La Lair of the Mistmen, is just quirky and weird and, and bizarre, but in all the best ways possible. He ended up getting, uh, I made a I made a new deity called the, the Blue Fairy, kind of like from Pinocchio. 
And he eventually started worshipping a, 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 the god emperor Razul, who I should note that the god emperor Razul was Mark Plord's one character that he retired after becoming the god mayor of Slither's End. So again, as you can see, we did a lot of stuff in this campaign. It's probably not in the book, but you can make it your own. So you could run this as a con module, but I would be just, I would caution you that this really is another one of those multi-session adventures uh, if you want to do everything, but maybe start the adventure at the, at the manor if you're going to run it in a con or take the second floor out. We have some comments. Devin says, this is such a great sale. You get some fun open world stuff, some spooky horror stuff. What's not to love? Totally agree. You get to you get four adventures, uh, you know, that you can, you can do what you will with essentially, you know, it's, it's perfect for everyone. And right now, uh, I'm going off, the, off track a bit. For you online players, since that PDF that's out there includes a lot of the maps, you can very easily screen share those maps if you're a GM like me, who I just screen share and zoom in on Zoom. And I'm like, okay, this is where you're at. Oh, next door, okay, you're at the next door. I, just, I don't do, I don't do roll 20, because I'm old. All right, uh, Hector really, really, really needs to run these. Yes, you do, at least run one of them, you know? Um, the book is worth it just for one of these adventures. All right, uh, Lair of the Mist Men. This is the fourth and final adventure in the book. This is a, uh, I gotta say, this is this is cool for a few reasons. Uh, first off, Lair of the Mist Men, if you are running this as the, and we call it the Great Sunken City Omnibus Tour, or the Great uh, Scott, as I called it, uh, if you're running it as a tour, I introduced the Mist Men earlier in the campaign when they were in Slither's End, and the Mist Men were a pain in the butt to deal with, and they encountered them a few times. So when uh, eventually they had to go deal with the Mist Men, and the Mist Men have this adventure in itself has a fun sci-fi feel to it. It doesn't feel like a um, a straight up DCC fantasy campaign. I don't know if I would put this one in, if you're trying to go for a Conan the Barbarian feel, like that kind of sword and sorcery, I don't know if it would work for that. For for me, I throw everything together. Like I'm totally fine. Uh, speaking of weird characters, uh, this was the this was the adventure where we started to see, uh, where we, we were introduced to Mark Plord's uh, manimal character Mark's character had a uh, had a, a war shit zoo named Nutbiter, and we we rewarded Mark. I rewarded Mark on his birthday after Lair of the Mist Men because Nutbiter was his character's like little little doggy pal that went with him. We rewarded him with Nutbiter chewing on some like uh, uh, some greenstone shards later on the Purple Planet, and he gained full manimal form and became a uh, a manimal shit zoo, uh, but. But Nutbiter got his first uh, his first bites in in Lair of the Mist Men. Uh, it's a first level module. It has I ran it as second slash third level over uh, a couple sessions. Uh, had to beef up the monsters a bit, but it wasn't hard to do, or the the encounters a bit wasn't hard to do. Um, and uh, we used it as a gateway to advance time in our campaign. So they actually advanced like a thousand years in the future afterwards. I led that to the Purple Planet. This is a great con length adventure. This really is your perfect four hour adventure. I drew it out, but you could run it in one con session. Uh, the the sci-fi feel is cool because you could use this for either DCC or MCC if you want to run it for Mutant Crawl Classics. So if you're looking for a Mutant Crawl Classics adventure and you really don't have the feel of wanting to do one of the ones that's already out there that's clearly MCC, not that you shouldn't want to do that. There's a lot of great MCC adventures out there. Uh, this is a fantastic module for MCC, uh, written well before MCC's uh, inception. So, you know, just uh, tossing that out there, it would work for either. You could add some um, artifacts in there. It'd be really easy. There are these silver tubes that can be used like as lasers, essentially, out of this uh, out of this adventure. And I think you could very easily give them artifact checks if you want to do. Uh, wouldn't be wouldn't be that hard to do. Uh, the Mist Men themselves have a uh, bizarre 
sort of sci-fi feel to them. I'm trying to find a picture. Oh, there's the one dude there. There he is. Huh. Spoilers. So, that's Lair of the Mist Men. Um, all in all, this this is a A plus product. If you if you, I know I gave last week's product an A plus. I'm gonna go with this one on an A plus as well. I don't I don't. I don't plan to review things I don't like, so I'm gonna say that now. I had the same uh, deal on my blog. I would never review, if I don't like something, I'm just not gonna review it. So if I'm talking about it, it's something I like, I love, I'm passionate about. I'm so passionate about this book. I, I hope that's coming out. Uh, I am. This is not endorsed by, by Purple Sorcerer. I've run like a trillion dollars of sheets of paper probably through the character builder but i'm i i'm for supporting john and what everything he does whether every year that's contributing to uh like the, the drive they do he does to to help get some funds to keep the purple sorcerer.com is a free place to uh uh to uh what's it called to to get uh you know uh tools or if it's a, a you know you can get the purple uh, the Crawler Companion app for your phone, that's also through them. And look at that, purplesorcerer.com. Uh, Hector's putting the post up. So if you don't know what Purple Sorcerer is, go check them out. But another way to support them is to buy the adventures and buy the modules through drive through RPG. Uh, so that's the that's the deal here. I have the standard cover print. The stand, I'm sorry, the, the, the standard print uh, soft cover. It's worked great for me. It's held up great. You can get a premium print or you can get a hardback. If you want to spend a bit more, it's probably worth it. I, I, this has done a, a really good job for me. I haven't had no problems with this. This book is five years old, and it's holding up fantastic for me. Um, you know, and, and if you get it online, you also get the PDFs for it, which is you know, it's 150 printable miniatures. It's pages and pages and pages of maps that you can easily screen share or print and, and tape together if you wanted to. It's a lot of gaming. So for us, for 15 sessions and a backstory to lead into an amazing campaign, it was a well worth the $20. Very well worth it. So a must-buy for DCC fans. Support your local, friendly Purple Sorcerer the best way you can. And that is my review of The Sunken City Adventure Omnibus and Guide. So, all right, well, what, what, what for next week? What should I talk about? Um kind of open to suggestions you can leave them in the chat here before i jump off or if you're watching this on youtube feel free to leave it in the comments below i was thinking maybe covering the purple planet box set that's a possibility i was thinking potentially of delving into some of the more classic adventures from dcc if uh that could be sailors in a starless sea i've run that about 10 times i could discuss how i've run it forwards and backwards i've done the forward sailors i've done the reverse sailors i've done the sailors where the the beast men go on strike after calling their union i've done sailors in mcc and dcc i could do that i could talk about uh so the other adventures i have for dcc i was considering talking about maybe the uh the monster Al monsters alphabet or the uh, dungeon alphabet not sure what i'm gonna do i will be doing something but I'll be back next Thursday for another review. Uh, Devin says my post-COVID buy list is getting pretty long, but this has to go on it. Agreed. And definitely Purple Planet. I've seen a lot of requests for Purple Planet. So I've, uh, I'm happy to, happy to do that. And John, I am happy to give you the kind words because you totally deserve it. You are such an amazing person. And we, we all, as DCC fans, and gaming fans in general definitely appreciate everything you do for the hobby and especially for Dungeon Crawl and Mutant Crawl Classics. So thank you for, for being you. Um, so that's that. I hope you enjoyed the review. If you did, please tell a friend about it uh, and the Living for Crits page. We would love, love, love to, uh, to, to chat more about this and, and with more people. Um, so uh, as, the, as the weeks go on, you know, remember we have a Sunday show as well. So every Thursday and Sunday right now, Sunday, I'll be here with Judge Evie again. We're going to be talking potentially about our X Crawl campaign because on Thursday we kicked off an X Crawl campaign and we started with Dungeon Battle Brooklyn and it was freaking awesome. Uh, we're going to do every Tuesday night X Crawl 
And I'm really enamored by the idea of doing that. Even before we have X Crawl Classics, um, you know, I, I, I will talk a bit about the adventures that are already out there for X Crawl. I may have seen some of the X Crawl stuff that's, you know, coming out, but I cannot talk about it. So instead, we can talk about the X Crawl books that are out, and Dungeon Battle Brooklyn is already on the market, and you can already see it and get a snapshot of what X Crawl Classics is going to be. So we might talk about that, and, and Evie's got a pretty cool character that we could talk about too. So let's see here. Uh, up Down Devin saying, not sure if you spent much time with Umerica, but I'm curious about it. I will say, if you want to hear more about Umerica, definitely go check out Globern. That's the podcast that myself and Mark Plord are on, and Hectophonic, Hector here, Hector the Missile Cruise, is our amazing audio uh, genius that does all the editing for that. So, uh, you know, that's, that's, that's that. Last Sunday's module idea was great from, from Devin. Oh, was my module idea last Sunday? <laughs> I can't remember. Dude, my weeks, like, go by, like, in a crazy... Oh, last week, I'm sorry, last week was Tiger King. I got, like, three, like, 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 dislikes on that, on that, um, that show. I've never had three, like, dislikes or unlikes. Uh, on one thing that quickly. So I guess, I think Tiger King is one of those things that push the wrong buttons. So I get it, understood. Even from the Tiger's perspective, people didn't like it, and that's okay. We will not discuss Tiger King again unless Judge Evie brings it up, I promise. Uh, but that's that. If you're watching on YouTube, please like, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you Sunday with our chat about something with me and Judge, Judge Evie. So... There we go. Have a great Thursday. We're just a day away from the weekend. We're almost there. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Get as much gaming as you can get in right now. Keep yourselves po like like I want to say positive, not COVID positive. Keep yourselves like like mentally positive and happy, and and do whatever you can to be kind to each other. Have a great night.